Hey everybody, Rob here. We got a lot of things happening today. You can obviously see I have all the floor mats out of the truck. I have a bunch of supplies over here. We're gonna have a really busy day today. There's a lot of things that are gonna happen. I have two of my friends coming to help me today. So there's a lot that we're gonna do. So I'm just gonna briefly cover what we're gonna go over today. First things first, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put new windshield wipers in. I'm gonna fill up the windshield washer fluid system. I'm gonna test the system to make sure it works. I'm gonna check the oil just to make sure it's still good. I'm gonna change it anyway. Once my friends get here, we're gonna do a deep clean of the interior we're going to bleed the brake system fill it up with some new dot3 brake fluid just because we think that may be one of the reasons why my brakes are not really responsive they're very very weak i don't know if i'm going to be able to capture everything on video because there's going to be a lot of things happening all at once so what i'm going to do before my friends get here i'm going to go ahead and put the truck up on jack stands i'm going to do the windshield wipers i'm going to do all that small stuff before they get here that way when they get here we can just kind of hit the ground running i'm going to try to document as best i can while also working on the truck so without further ado let's just dive in all right like i said i was going to check the washer fluid to see how much is left i think it's completely bone dry in there i can't even get the camera to focus yeah i think it's completely bone dry where it says low in there is gone it must have literally drained it so i'll go ahead and i'll put some in here so after putting in about a bottle and a half this actually has some fluid in it now it was completely empty all right, so let's go make sure the pumps work. But first, I gotta put windshield wipers on. So when I first bought the truck, I noticed that this windshield wiper was a little too long. I went to take a closer look and I realized there's literally nothing holding this one on. That's why it's so far over off the window like this because I didn't realize that when I first looked at the truck, but literally nothing holding it on. I don't know if you can see it. There's no uh, clip mechanism in here. It's literally garbage. The other one is clipped on. So I'll go ahead and take that off and I'll put the new ones on. The new wipers are on. The old ones were actually Rain-X wipers, and I think with this truck, the passenger side should technically be a smaller wiper blade, because even with the new one, it still sticks over the edge a little bit. So I don't know if that's actually the right wiper blade, but that's what the guy at the auto parts store gave me. But got washer fluid in there, I got wipers on, so let's make sure the system works. I hope I didn't just scratch the window. Either, either I didn't put this in right or it didn't click in all the way. So let me try to fix this. So as you just saw, I did in fact scratch the glass. When that windshield wiper flipped over, the U-hook came down and left a nice gouge right across the window. Thankfully, you really don't see it unless you actually go looking for it. So it's not really a big deal because it's auto glass. You can get a rock chip and have to have it replaced anyways. And I'm pretty sure I know what I did wrong. I didn't catch it on camera. When I put the wipers together, there's a little piece that clips onto the blade itself to allow you to put it onto the U-hook and that piece is held together with four pins. I don't think I put it in right. So when the wiper arm came up and it went to come down, the force plus the friction on the dryness of the glass, it just caused it to kind of come undone. It snapped, flipped it over and left that nice line in the glass. I didn't catch myself trying to fix it on camera because I just kind of put the camera down, I fixed it and then I got right back to work. So let's get back to it. All right, so I've gone ahead and I've checked the oil. It's a little concerning. This was the first pull, it's a little dirty, so the oil probably should be changed. This was how much oil I got off the dipstick on the second pull. You can see the dipstick there. That was the third pull. There wasn't much on it. So either way, I'm changing the oil just because I want to see how much oil is actually in here because that's a concerning sign, but I didn't hear it knock and I have okay oil pressure. So we'll have to make sure we change the oil today also. All right, so I went to go ahead and try to get the wheels off, but they are stuck on there pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I put some WD-40 in there on the lug nuts and the studs themselves to make sure I can get them off. I'm going to let that soak for a bit. I did it on all four tires. If you look here, I'll show you on the rear ones. You see how rusted the studs look? I mean, that, that's not bad or anything. That's just, it looks like it's just surface on the outside because the lug nuts are supposed to have these covers on them, but most of the covers are missing because unfortunately they do crack. So you can see they these these do crack. I found a whole bunch of them in the truck, but look, come look at the driver's side front wheel. If you look at the driver's side front wheel, look how clean those studs are. That leads me to believe that this front hub must have been replaced. That's the only reason why those studs would be, you know, relatively clean like that. They're not the same kind of studs. They have little markings on them compared to the factory ones. So this leads me to believe, like I said, this front hub was probably replaced, which is a good thing as long as I can get the wheels off. So I'm going to let the WD-40 soak for a bit, and then I'm going to go ahead and try to get the wheels off and get it up on jack stands. These are 16 by 7 inch wheels. I wanted to test a 15 by 7. The only drawback is the only tire size that I have on a 15 by 7 inch wheel is this whole thing. The wheel will fit on the rear. Now I just got to see if the wheel will fit on the front. But this is a 15 by 7 compared to the stock 16 by 7s. 
And this tire is also a 32 by 12 and a half versus whatever that's supposed to be. You have no clearance really. You can see in there, you have no clearance really for the uh, the brake drum. The wheel does fit. I'm gonna take this wheel, I'm gonna put it over there and see if it fits around the front disc brake. Kind of looks pretty cool though, having the, uh, the 32 by 12 and a half on there. All right, so like I said, I tested the wheel on the back. The wheel fits on the front. That's a 15 by seven compared to a 16 by seven. I think just before I said it was a 32 by 12 and a half, it is actually a 33 by 12 and a half R15 LT, it's a truck tire. It's a BF Goodrich All-Terrain TAKO. It's the first generation, it's not a second generation. They don't make these anymore. This one actually still has the, uh, the little nubbies in here. It's dry rotted though, got it out of a junkyard. But the 15 inch wheels fit, which is nice. I'll tell you why this is good. Come take a look at these. So this right here is why it's good that those 15 by sevens fit. My uncle painted these for a previous project of mine. You may recognize the color, but these are GM painted sunset gold 15 by seven inch wheels, which means if those 15 by seven inch steelies that I just put on to test fit work, then I can put these wheels on the truck, which is great because I'd hate to get rid of these. So I'm gonna check a few more things, but this is the reason why I wanted to make sure those 15 by sevens fit. So this is what I wanted to check clearance on with the 15. I wanted to make sure that castle nut had clearance. And then if you look in here, you can kind of see all the way around the brake rotor and the uh, caliper. It may be close. I don't know if I can get a shot, but it's like really close in there. They may fit, they may not. May need a different offset just to give it a little bit extra clearance. I put lug nuts on the one side, but it seems to spin freely without rubbing anywhere. Yeah, I'm not seeing, I'm not hearing any grinding. It's not getting caught up on anything. We'll keep going just in case here. Make a complete turn. We're almost there, I think. Yeah, it feels good. It doesn't feel like it's getting caught up on anything. It's kind of hard to show you in here, but the 15 by sevens fit. I don't know if the 33 by 12 and a half will fit, but that's not the tire size I was gonna go with anyway. I just wanted to make sure that the wheel fit and plenty of clearance for the castle nut there. That's a good thing. So as you've already seen, I filled the washer fluid. I check the windshield washers to make sure they work. Scratch the glass by improperly putting the windshield wipers on. Check the oil, kind of concerned there's no oil in the truck at all, but it doesn't make any noise, so we'll have to wait and see. And I did manage to do a 15 inch wheel test to make sure that it fit. I'm not really sure they'll fit, but we'll just have to see what happens. Now, during that fit test, I managed to get three of the four wheels off. By the time I was working on the fourth one, both my friends, Anthony and Brian came and we were actually able to get that wheel off. We'll jump back into it in a minute, but I wanna just point out that when my friends arrived, they work a lot faster than me, and a lot of work was being done kind of simultaneously, like Anthony was working on one thing, Brian was working on another, and I tried to capture as much of it as I could and stitch it together so it flows and tells a complete story. When you try to work on the truck yourself, help your friends, and document everything, it tends to get a little dicey. Just wanted to give you a heads up. Without further ado, let's get back into it. So my friends arrived, this is the uh, front hub. Some of these were really stuck on there. It took what, both of you to get it off? Two, two guys in a breaker bar. Yeah, two guys, two guys in a breaker bar, 300 to 400 pounds, try to get that one off. So this is the this is the front hub. You can see these studs are new. These are completely new studs. Brakes aren't bad either. Brakes aren't bad. Rotors are okay. Lots of life on the pads. Yeah, so Just what we're gonna do is we're gonna bleed the brakes. We're gonna start with the rear. We're gonna walk our way around. And Oil change as well. Oil change and we're good to go. And a, and, a, and a silicone spray and every bushing that's in there. So Brian's gonna open up the brake bleeder. We're gonna bleed the brakes. I'm gonna go grab him some brake fluid. What did you say was gone? So, I mean, these aren't like this. Yeah. I mean, it's in the air, but it's got play in it. And uh, these bushings are all squashed. So with new bushings here, don't do poly because they make noise in my opinion, but new rubber bushings here and new sway bar end links for new bushings up up and down. Okay. Tighten up the truck. All but right. when, the, when the wheel and tire go back on, we can start yanking them out to see if it needs ball joint or tie rod or whatever it needs. But okay. all these bushings and everything, we're gonna spray all those. Yeah, I have Yay. all the silicone spray. Did it work? I got it off, free, it's not rusted on there. There we go. Open. He took a brake bleeder off, I don't actually know where it was, but oh, I see it right there. It's the little nipple. Yep, there it is, okay. He's gonna go around the truck and get the one off the, pass the driver's side and the two in the front. Poor man's air uh, brake bleeder system. This goes onto the bleeder, air gets pumped out, goes into the uh, catch can, bottle as I call it. Air bubbles pop to the top, they vent, and when it does suck back in, it only sucks fluid in. Takes all the air out of the system. We'll start with furthest from the master cylinder, which is passenger rear, then driver rear, passenger front, then driver front. This is the master right here. This is the man. See how black that fluid is? Obviously from before. You can see the, how clean uh, you can the, see the new how fluid clear is. The new fluid is, so it doesn't hurt that way. 
where bleeding it and at the same time changing fluid. It's not a professional flush, but it'll get you good enough to where you can get it to a professional shop. All right, should so not be that black. No, it shouldn't. It was. I wouldn't be surprised if it was never changed. They changed the pads and all that. They did not change the fluid. See how there's no more air in the line? So we pumped out most, if not all of the air out of this brake line. We'll do the other furthest side, which is driver rear, and we'll keep going around until we work our way closest to the master. On vehicles that are front engine, rear wheel drive, or four wheel drive, most of the weight is on the front end. It makes sense that the brakes on the front of a vehicle are bigger, since most of the weight is here. I need a 10 millimeter wrench to get this brake bleeder off, because it's bigger than the rear bleeders. Okay. And right now what I want to make sure is we have enough fluid in the master so we're not running it dry and okay. sucking up more air into the system. Right. So I'll top this off just a little bit. It's ideal not to mix fluid, but in this case, we're just gonna do it to get the air to give the pedal a firmer feel. And later down the road, we can always have a professional flush the system completely. But if we were to do that now, it would take us a long time to bleed it yeah. by hand. But I just wanted to grab my special pro's foot. So we're gonna crack this one. Just I just wanna make sure that these threads aren't uh, rusted and gold up. So see how that moves free, we're good there. Same, kind of same principle as rear, the, just these bleeders are slightly larger. They make special size tools for this, but since we're on a budget and shade tree mechanics, we'll just use a regular the fish pump hose. You hook that up and then I'll go start pumping the brakes? Not quite yet. Let me make sure I get this hose on first. This hose is a smaller inner diameter. Not okay. ideal, but as long as it creates an airtight seal on this, we're good. So I'll kind of force fit it, but we, well, make, we make do with what we have. Now we're at the driver's side front. Now we're the closest to the master. After this, she will have brakes again or I should say better brakes. This is the part where you gotta help out. So I'm gonna do it four times then hold? Yep, four or five times then hold. Meh. 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 So our brake bleeding is done. I filled it up to about here, and this is all that got replaced with fresh fluid in the system with all the air that Tucked vents down, out vents to at atmosphere. We are good, we are bled. I actually didn't need a whole gallon of brake fluid, but I didn't know how much I would need, so. Always better to have too much than too little, because you may have to top it off eventually. Um, but I have not um, seen any brake leaks on this truck, so no. we should be good. It's not like the other one I had where we did the brake job and the brake lines exploded. Well, so this that's an example of something that would be a nightmare if it was rotted because all those all those bleeders will be gone so this is something here's like a repair that you can do with something that's not rotted and it actually goes to plan yeah and if they are rotted plan on a whole weekend job exactly. not, not two hours <laughs> exactly all right i'm gonna try to do the oil now put your hand up there and then keep tension on it so that it doesn't bounce back like pull this way not right. with that just with this hand get rid of that ready see uh, here again there it's go. going it's going there we go just need a little impact that's all you know what's nice? The truck is on a slight angle facing that way, which is exactly where the drain plug is. I don't want it to shoot out, so I'm just gonna do this for now. Can you do it with your hand now? No. No, it's still too tight. It's, it's getting tighter, actually. There, it's coming, it's coming, I see it. Here it comes. We'll clean up the threads. That's leaking. Someone doesn't have a crush washer on it. Where? On, on the drain plug should be a crush washer, so it doesn't leak. Oh shoot, right. yeah. Can you do it by hand now? No. Okay. We might just put it, yeah, we have an RTV. Here we go, here we go. Uh, I might, I don't know. Get a, get a dab of RTV on it when we tighten it. Here we go. No, yeah, it's, true. No, it's still. It is missing the crush washer. I hope this doesn't arc like past me, <laughs> over me. It's got like, it goes smooth and then it gets oh, tough. Boy. Probably hasn't been off Hopefully in a while. it's not stripped. Now do it by hand, ready? Gently. Come back, come back towards me a little bit, right there. Pull it. All right. All right, you can put that down. Oh, that's nasty. That is old. It was clean when I pulled it out. When I checked it, it's low. Yeah, there's like I was a... gonna say it's kinda low. That's why we got the oil change. Yeah, look at that. Wow. But she's quiet even with that oil. So yeah. she'll be real quiet now. You'll probably get more power too. Pro well that probably explains why my oil pressure was so low. Wow. Is that all that was in it? That's well, like what, maybe two quarts? This is why we don't trust previous people that say, oh, I did an oil change a month ago. Get out of here, that's all that was in there. Get the, no way. Yep, that's it. No Just way. Just leave it there for a while, let it drain. Now you, yeah. Oh my goodness. What does this take, five or six? It's 5.1 with an oil filter. I think that was not even two quarts. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put four and a half of regular in, and then another half of, or a little, little more than a little half of Lucas oil, okay? Okay, that's fine. I, I don't want I... the mixture to be too much but just enough. I just can't believe that's all that was in there. Dude, that is no oil. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm a little annoyed at that, but like I said, I checked the oil cold twice and I didn't get anything and I was concerned. It's, it's probably enough to keep it going for a little bit, but it's a good thing we you did not drive this thing a whole lot. Okay, don't drive it. Well, I only put 14 miles on it. No, it's fine. If it was that quiet with this oil in it, it's going to be silent now. So the filter won't come out, so we're doing it with a screwdriver. I got a new one anyway, so. Oh my God, the cigarette's stuck in the corner. Gross! <laughs> you found a cigarette in there? It's stuck in the dashboard. <laughs> I didn't know what it was. There you go. That one in. Need a longer screwdriver. I don't think I have this, it. This one doesn't have leverage. There is an ashtray in here that he didn't use. <laughs> I didn't use the ashtray. Oh my god. Did you throw the cigarette on the ground? Yeah. There it is. Oh my That's god. It right there. Oh my god. All right. You need a longer screwdriver? Yeah. This or one doesn't have the leverage. All right. I'm it's got to go all the way through the filter. Still struggling with the oil filter? Yep. You got to pry up and spin it the other way, but the whoever tightened it, tightened it way too hard. I it's see. not supposed to be that tight. I'm not surprised at all. You're supposed to like gently like finger tight it. Yeah, but well, well, after how we saw some of the lug nuts were put on. I want to try and get it from the bottom so I can get more leverage and spin it because it's got to go that way. So Brian was able to get this off the old oil filter. See the old CarQuest logo there. Had to jam a screwdriver through it because it was on way too tight. Somebody put this on way too tight. We won't make that mistake with the new filter we put on. But he got it off. Not a lot of oil came out of the engine. That's usually not a good sign, but the engine wasn't making a lot of noise. So I think we'll be okay. So Anthony's going to put the oil filter in. And we got some synthetic 10W30 we're going to put in. That's so we don't Please. screw up the seal when we screw it on. Dry seals are never a good thing. No, they're not. Learn that the hard way. I gotta put the drain plug back in, so. Plug. You want me to do it hand tight? Yeah, we don't need to wrench it down, right? Hand tight and then like, what, a quarter turn? No, I got, I got it tight. As long as it doesn't leak, get it off next time. That's not leaking. There's our new oil filter. At least they gave me the right one this time. Yeah, the old, show the old one. Yeah, no, I did before. That's the old one. The old Stabbed hole in it. Yeah. To get it out. Someone put it on with, I don't know what, the world's strongest wrench. So we topped off the coolant. We had to put a zip tie here. There was no clamp there. Put some right. coolant in there and filled up to the cold level. So we should be good. Please hold it. I'm holding it the best I can. Don't have it slide out the bottom. All right, slow down a little bit. Put four and a half in there and then a little bit of Lucas. All right, so we just put oil in. Five quarts, quart of Lucas, turn it on. Hopefully I'll blow it up. It's not here, right? I can hope not. Well, it wouldn't matter, it's in the air. <laughs> We got good oil pressure. All right, well, it's quiet. You hear that? I hear nothing. I, can't, I don't hear a sound. Quiet. Makes no sound at all. Okay, just, just kill it. Why did you say you have lights on? I don't know. The, ga the gauge cluster's messed up. Someone make sure Everything that, that the, moves. Uh, the master, the reservoir doesn't run out of fluid. I mean, I can do these, they're whooped, but this might breathe some life into them, at least when it's got weight on it. That's fine. That's okay. You spraying the degreaser now? I don't want to get the belts all squeaky. Yeah, I don't want to get the, on the belt. I mean, it'll dry, but... Rub some soap on it. Watch out. Yeah, I see it. Oh, this is a doobie. Oh, is it? Those are rolling papers. Yeah, I found a whole box of rolling papers. You guys just going nuts with the degreaser? Uh -huh. Oh, what, what, did, what did we find here? Evidence of this, uh, this is, uh, yeah. illegal substance. Like I said, I found a whole box of rollers in the back of the truck. Ah, my foot! <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna do real quick is I'm just going to do a final overview of how dirty the truck is. Just kind of show you all the dirt and the grime. So I wanna make sure I document it all before we clean it, because then I can show you the difference. Busted cup holder there. Who knows what is in there. I mean, you can see how dirty the dash is. Hopefully if I can capture it, it's kind of tough. Just how dirty everything is. I don't know if I captured it before, but let me look, there's grime up there. Speakers, the doors. The carpet on the doors is in pretty good shape, but we have stains in here, that's dirty, I mean. 
this is what we discovered yesterday it was absolutely filthy there's stuff in there i mean who knows what that is open the one down here this bottom one's pretty clean but it's still dirty i mean you have whatever that is on the seat seats are dirty see how dirty it is under the seat to leave it up because we're going to clean it all anyway all right you can see this is the cargo area you can see the carpet in the corner is dirty stain on the seat you have a stain over here all this hopefully can just a nice good vacuuming and a good shampooing and we can bring the carpet back to life all kind of dirty it is the headliners okay for the most part they didn't get any dirt or garbage up on the headliner it does have a small tear in it though even the panels on the back of the doors are good. This side is really dirty. I mean, you can see there's a massive stain there. Massive stain here. The carpet here was covered. That's okay. The seat's pretty dirty. Go ahead and pull this out. Oh. I mean, you can see how dirty that is. I mean, look at this. Look how stained this is and how dirty it is under here. Here, got some staining, some staining on the speakers. The door handle's a little grimy. Hopefully we can clean that up. This seat's okay. Just a good cleaning. I mean, look how dirty the center console is, even from this side. And then you have the stain right here. I don't even know what stains that, except for stuff that would spill from here. Hopefully we can clean some of this up. Glove box good vacuuming and a wipe down and that should be fine all right so that's an overview of a before video of the interior of the truck before we go ahead and actually clean it and then once we're done cleaning i'll give you a nice overview of what it looks like all cleaned up so what are you putting down what is that so basically i use this at home like it's good for you have pets but it's just like a dr Scholl's foot powder but imagine for your carpet you pop it down wait a few minutes and then you vacuum it all up and hopefully it'll smell better so we put them on the mats too yeah all, all the mats should be out there we put it in the front and we put it back here it's going everywhere there's carpet sounds like a plan so you want me to spray this here with wow, that? This stuff works great. It's getting this all this goop off. What did you use, the foam? Yeah, but it's tacky, so that's what makes it all stick. Do you want me to spray this here? Yes, sir. Hand me that. Just just go once over, and it's real foamy. There you go. Now wait. I just want it to break up so I can start vacuuming it. I don't even know what, I think it's wax. I don't know what it is. I don't want to damage the seat. Yeah, I don't want to damage the seat either. So you just got to keep doing that gently. Uh, one, like keep spraying wipe, spraying wipe. Gross. <laughs> Any progress on that? Yeah, a little gross. It's still slowly coming up. Other than that, everything's starting to look much better. Oh yeah. It, it smells better. better. Yeah, it smells like chemicals. It smells That's a lot better. Way better than cigarettes. It's crazy. Good? Yeah. So you're basically just using this, you're going to brush it in with that and then just Hose, hose them off. off. We're gonna repeat that for all these. Yeah, pretty much. You're just putting conditioner on it right now. Yeah, just to get just some protection on it. it. Doesn't chafe anymore, and it already looks way better. I gotta get all that off though. Well, yeah, it smells better too. Oh, it's way better. This thing reeked of cigarettes, and like I said, there were 25 air fresheners in here. They weren't helping. No. Well, there was only two, and they were gone. It's like, but it's like putting a bandaid on. No, oh, like... I found 25. You know, like the little red trees. Yeah. I found 25 strings of little red trees. That's insane. All right, so I just want to give you a quick rundown after we've cleaned the interior. We didn't really do a deep clean, but we did a minor conditioning. We did some shampoo. I mean, everything looks a little better, even under here. I mean, in here, underneath there. My buddy vacuumed it all out. It looks pretty good. Cleaned up fairly well. The seat's not in that bad shape. We just used some of the foaming shampoo to clean a lot of the stuff, even on the dash. I mean, there's still stuff on there. I mean, the dash is brittle, but we were able to clean up most of it. Even in the center console, he, my buddy was able to get rid of some of this stuff. We got rid of some of the stuff that was in here. This is still a mess. He didn't get in there just yet, but that's okay. That's for another day. A lot of vacuuming, a lot of the spray shampoo. The seats cleaned up very well. What's really good though, is we were able to get that big ugly piece that was here. Whatever it was, I don't know what it was, but it was here, it was stuck. We eventually got that off. We used some goo gone, it got off. Vacuumed all under here, cleaned up this, cleaned up this a little bit, removed a lot of the stickiness. While checking the truck though, like funny enough, in here was like the cleanest part of the truck. This must have never been used because it was so clean compared to the rest of the whole truck. 
There's still some garbage. We didn't do a deep clean. We kind of ran out of time. It's really clean. It looks much better. It's much more presentable. You can kind of get in it and not get skeeved out, which also nice is it doesn't smell like cigarettes anymore. It used to smell really bad of cigarettes. That's why there were 25 air fresheners in it. But even this, we shampooed this, we scrubbed it. This cleaned up well. The carpet back here cleaned up well. I mean, look, we, we vacuumed it. I mean, it's still stained and everything. It definitely needs to be a, like, you know, good shampooing, maybe a, like a steamer or something like that. And it should clean up okay. Even here, it's all just cleaned up. It's presentable. The truck is presentable. It was not presentable when I got it and it's reeked of cigarettes. Even here, I mean, there's still stain here. But we cleaned up the seat, if you remember. There was all that sticky stuff here, cleaned up all that, cleaned up this, cleaned up that. Again, a real detail, like a shampoo and a steam and it'll be the way it should be, but it's much, much, much better now. Even under here, even under here has all been cleaned. We shampooed this, we shampooed the uh, carpet floor mat. This is much cleaner. This seat cleaned up okay. We shampooed this, cleaned it up. You know, there's some cigarette burns. You know, what are you gonna do about that? And then we have a cigarette burn here, a couple cigarette burns. Again, steam clean, you should be good to go, but the truck's much cleaner than it was. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do the tire rotation. We degreased the front end. New oil filter, new oil, some coolant, some new brake fluid in there. Degreased a lot of it. Sure, we're gonna rotate the tires as we go for a road trip. Brakes are okay. We bled the system, so it's all good. And then we'll just do our tire rotation. We'll go for a road trip. Really good for a 22 year old. Oh, what, that there was uh, no smoke coming out? Yeah, there's no smoke, man. Just some steam from the moisture. So we got the tire rotation done. Gonna go ahead and burp the thermostat and then uh, we're good. We checked the air cleaner, air cleaner's good. Oh, did you do WD the doors? Nice. That's what they all need. Well, we did our tire rotation, our oil change. We did our, what else did we do? We did so much. Oh my God. Degrease, rotate bleed the, the tires, bleed the brakes, oil change, interior cleaning a lot. Yeah. Because it was awful in here. It was here. disgusting. Guy, it's not even a deep clean. We didn't even detail it guy yet. Guy must have smoked 4,000 cigarettes in here easy. <laughs> and there's some, there was some weird goo on the back seat. There was some weird goo on the back seat. No comment. Yeah. No comment on what that was. It's uh... You're going to know how it feels different because I, I just drove it for that one. You you drove it when you first got it, so see if it feels a, any different. Did you put a CD in there? I did not. Oh, oh we got a flip in <laughs> We got... Apparently there's a CD in there. I found an Aerosmith CD earlier, but now we got Fleetwood Mac to listen Drink to. It. See if that works. Oh, we gotta turn it off. No. There we go. Track, track one. one. Watch all the speakers be blown. Well, we have... Wait. Oh, they're working. All the speakers are working. <laughs> Balance works. Wow, it sounds pretty good. Yeah. Stereotypical, right. like feel good music. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here we go. All right, let's go for our trip. I think it's just running with half good fluid, half bad fluid. So it's well, really that bad. too. They work. They're just spongy, but they do feel better. You feel confident when you stop now? Like you will stop in time? Yeah, you still gotta repair a little bit for it. How's it good. feel with oil change? It feels more healthy. Oil pressure is about the same as what it was when it only had like two quarts in it, or maybe three quarts. Well, I I feel safe. Yeah, I feel safe in it. I feel like I can drive it back. I gotta say safe. though, it smells way better. Yeah, it doesn't smell like cigarettes. Thanks to moi. Yeah, thanks to Anthony and his detailing skills and all the chemicals that he brought with him. Lots of chemicals. Mm, I'm glad we got I'm glad we got that off without damaging the leather. Yeah. Alright, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna drive around for a little bit and we are gonna go to the car wash. And then we'll detail it another day. So we'll go on a little bit of a trip. But it works, runs and oh the service engine light came off. Oh boo. Damn. Well that's the first check engine light, but who knows what it is. But the oil pressure is good, the temp is good. Yeah, dude, if it's running fine, don't let it bother you right now. It might go away once everything dries off. True. Because yeah. I was spraying all everything under there. Yeah, but it drives pretty well. The brakes feel better. Next time I come over, I'll bring my OBD scanner, my Bluetooth one. All right, so we are at the car wash. Did you just get the basic wash? Or the yeah, basic. Gold wash. I get the basic. All right. Truck's first wash. Under new ownership. Under new ownership. The last time I found a receipt, it said 2019, so. Is the window switch locked on the driver's side? Yeah, it should work oh, now. There we go. I just want to check the switch. Just no make thanks. Sure. No thanks? Yeah. There we go. All the switches work. I thought this switch was broken. I'm like, oh, why can't I put the window up? Hold up. That could be a uh, heat shield vibrating. I just heard that. 
Doesn't just, do it all the time. That's, so. what sound, that's what it sounded like a heat shield. Ooh, those seals are dry. Yeah. Alright, get the windows up. Uh -huh. Back. I'll keep mine open until we have to go up. I was gonna say you can crank it just a little bit because we got the rain deflectors on, but not much. Although that mirror doesn't fold. And just tell him that. Tell him, hey, this mirror is broken. It's stuck. It's literally taped. Good thing I have my window closed to it. Blew right in my face. He tried to fold it in. It doesn't fold. Yeah. All right. Oh, it's hanging on here. Here it goes. Woo! It's like a roller coaster. We. I feel a little rough at low idle. Yeah, see, now it's at 400. They have to be honest, it might just need plugs and wires. Okay. Who knows when they've been last done. Yeah, I was going to say, with 180,000 on the clock, who knows when the last time they gave it us a tune-up. Probably never. Well, they hardly drove it, so they probably figure, oh, we don't have to. Why do I feel like your door's open? No, because uh, oh, the, yeah. window, the window was cracked a little bit. It was cracked a little bit, but you got the rain guard, and let's see, it's not... Can we see if the rack door is leaking? Oh, hang on. I got a light. Are you going to check? Can't see anything on the outside. Well, definitely has nice cigarettes. It smells definitely better. Way better. The mirror didn't break. What? The mirror didn't break. My goodness. She getting spoiled today. Yeah, right? Right, they don't open the window when they go through the block dryer. No. No. The mirror didn't fall off. That's good. Your wiper blades are going crazy. <laughs> Yeah, I think I feel baby misfire when it gets hot at low idle. Could be plugs, more than likely plugs. And I'm sure the two plugs closest to the firewall are fun and easy to get to. <laughs> Never. <laughs> what it is, even with the uh, worn out front suspension, it still feels pretty good on the highway. Yeah, yeah it's soft. I mean, it does 55 just fine. Oh, I can feel the boatiness even I'm not driving. <laughs> yeah. So we'll wrap up the rest of our road test and we'll head home. We did a lot of work today. I mean, we were out here all day. Took the truck to the car wash. We did a tire rotation. We degreased the front end. We did a lot of work. I mean, the truck cleans up very well. This is it after the car wash. Very clean. Again, it was just a basic wash. We just washed the dirt and the dust off of it. And the truck cleaned up very well. Rides really good. The brakes feel a little better. We bled the system out. We got the air out of the system. They still feel good. It does need pads and rotors. Steering's okay. Shocks are all blown. All four corners needs new shocks. The shocks are done. Sway mount, end linkages, all the bushing that all needs to be replaced everything kind of needs to be replaced we topped it off with some windshield washer fluid we put a new oil in it we did all kinds of stuff and the truck looks much much better and just really really happy with it right now it has a small radiator leak but that's an easy fix i'll go ahead and fix that i don't even remember what we did we did so much stuff it's just a lot of work and all that stuff we did manage to find an extra 27 cents so that brings the total amount of money found in the truck that can be used off the purchase price was two dollars and 31 cents it was $2.04 before, found an extra $0.27, cents, and now we have $2.31. Truck looks good. I'm really happy with it. Look forward to doing more on it. It's not really ready to drive around long distances because of that radiator leak, even though it's very, very small. I'll just have to fix that. And then she should be good to drive around town. New shocks and everything else. So if you've enjoyed the content, you've made it this far, you know what to do. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for sticking with me. All right, so we made it to the end of the video. I want to give a special shout out to my friend Anthony and Brian for all their help. Without them, this probably would have taken a lot longer, even though we were out there for four hours in the sun. I didn't have the tarp to put over the truck to keep us in the shade, so I'm pretty sure Anthony ended up going home with a, a mild case of a heat exhaustion or heat stroke. He was inside vacuuming a lot. Uh, even with the doors open and the windows open, uh, it still gets pretty hot in there because you're basically inside of a metal box with glass on it. So it's like a small oven. But the truck came out looking really good. It doesn't smell like cigarettes anymore. It stops a little bit better after the uh, brake bleed that we did. It probably still needs a professional brake job, but that'll be another time. I'm just happy to be able to drive the truck. And we did find a little bit more receipts in the truck there was really no more garbage it was just a couple of receipts what's nice about finding the receipts is like you know you get to see where the truck has been you get to see like oh what gas stations did it go to what restaurants did it go to you know normally you don't find receipts in a car you buy because usually it's cleaned out when someone's trying to sell it this one was just kind of had all stuff laying in it when we bought it 
I'm really happy with the outcome, and if you made it this far, I know it was a long video, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.